Well, hello, hello there. Uh, it's a short talk in the park, and we really are in a park this time with an old guy. And you see a couple of, I don't know what those are. Those are not ravens, uh, blackbirds or something. There's a bunch of varieties of blackbirds, and I don't know the names of them. Anyway, probably Ted and Alice. Uh, hey, it's a short talk with the old guy, and that would be me. I welcome you, Tuberubers and Tuberettes alike. We got that out of the way. Oh, I want to let you see here. Look here. That is what you call a piece of asphalt. <laughs> That there is called an old insulated coffee cup from a company I have no idea who that is. <laughs> it's a Saturday afternoon and a, been a pretty good day for me. I just thought I'd stop and visit with you some. It's been, oh my gosh, you know, I, I just find the news so depressing, especially with these traitors, these liars, these frauds at, at the highest positions. You know, the way they're treating these people in the uh, east who've uh, been nailed by this monster hurricane. Uh, like, here's 750 bucks, that's all I got by. And it's like, wait a minute, you just had 68 billion that you threw away on killing foreigners. And the, um, the new, it, it just ain't good, right? I mean, it's just, uh, and, and you look at this other sorry junk coming out of this. I, I call the, uh, the Biden unit, uh, the poodle, uh, in that uh, I found out that at one point, I found out it's just scientific, you know. I, I Googled it and found out that, um, the Chinese, among the Chinese people, uh, for their favorite lap dogs, frankly, it's often the poodle. They love poodles, so I guess the little toy ones, I don't know. Anyhow, so it seemed like a pretty, you know, the lap dog to the Chinese. Anyway, uh, so anyway, uh, that that character, uh, who belongs behind bars, are actually, you know, in, in my opinion, swinging by the uh, end of a rope in a public place. <laughs> but the, uh, anyway, that that's just not going to happen now, is it? But, uh... I just thought, you know, today, uh, you know, as I as I consider some of these things and, and stuff, I thought, you know, let's do what old guys do, <laughs> talk about my health. <laughs> but we're going to kind of link it through, we hope. And I got to thinking about this hypertension stuff. It's sort of weird to me that nobody appears to know what brings it on. Nobody knows what causes it. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I, I have no idea what they're what they're overlooking or what. It, to me, it's it's got. There's got to be a cause, right? Something like a majority of people over 60 have this stuff. But anyway, that's in the U.S. of A. Now, a lot of that has to do with the crap-ass diet that we are fed in this country. That we are fed things through our so-called food chain, which, by the way, is going to be failing pretty soon. You might want to wonder. Um, the uh, the thing is just it's grotesque what we're looking at here with these, these shenanigans. I, I tell you, what, what's happening is they're trying to maneuver fast enough to get the United States completely derailed off of any constitutional connection whatsoever bef before this ele election happens. In other words, the election, the uh, powers that be, the evil, uh, four-letter word, four-letter word, four over that, what they call the uh, the uh, the dark uh, the dark government or uh, whoever them characters are. Of course, none of them guys have names or addresses or phone numbers where you can call them up and say, "Hey, a hole, let's talk." <laughs> the the world's getting crazy, and uh, the USA now is getting tangled up with uh, Iran and uh, Russia's mixed up now in it, and it's like, what are you guys thinking? The U.S. is in no position, none. To take on a major land war in the Middle East? Are you kidding? And then, oh, in our spare time, a huge regional war in Europe. What a great idea. And at the same time, oh, yeah, let's not forget about China down there with Taiwan. But the um, situation is grim from many angles, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be, you know, thorough or anything, and I'm not trying to minimize some of the hurt. I mean, it, it's just outrageous. It's damnable. It is damnable. The way that our so-called authorities are operating. There are good people, good-hearted people in the East who tried to help. Tried to help these hurricane victims. You know, hey, let's bring in food. Here, have a blanket, you know, whatever. And the the response, so-called, of the so-called federal government, those uh, traitors, one and all. But they have um, treated these people so badly and then all of a sudden, some good folks from maybe who didn't get hit so hard, you know, maybe they're 100 miles out of the, the course of the framework, the fray, and they come to help, and they're being threatened with arrest for wanting to help their neighbors. And then they wonder, gee, uh, I wonder if there's any bias toward Christianity or against it. I mean, you know, this comes right out of the Bible. 
do to your brother as you would have him do to you. And they're trying to outlaw that. And that's the time the Christians need to say, there will be civil unrest, yes, civil disobedience. We will refuse your order. It's from hell. And that's that's what's happening. We're running into some serious uh, deep and dark muddy waters. And there's demonic forces behind them. Listen to the things they're saying. Watch their actions. Would any real human do that? I don't know, but it seems to me that people are being badly manipulated by the enemy right now. That The amount of deception is through the roof. And um, what's coming up next? Don't ask me. I ain't a prophet and I ain't a son of one. I'm an old plumber. But the thing is, is that when I look at you know this away and that away, I, I think... Um, there's no real place for a man like me to run to. I mean, I guess I could run to Russia and maybe apply for citizenship. But why would they have me? I don't know. <laughs> be like somebody shows up, hey, I, I just signed up at your citizen thing. I want to be a senior citizen and get benefits. <laughs> Wait a minute. Just for walking in the door? I don't think so. But anyway, it's, it's, it's a dark and it's an ugly world. So anyway, what I was going to do here, and please forgive me if this seems, shall we say, rude, or in any way coarse or, or whatever. I'm, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to speak in a way that makes sense. And I thought, what if basically we thought of um, hypertension, at, at the unknowable, we don't know why it's there, <laughs> hypertension as being a symptom of essentially clenching up. In other words, looking at a world around you that's hostile, ass backwards, batshit crazy, and those are for starters. You look at that junk and you think to yourself, who's running this zoo anyhow? <laughs> but the thing is that uh, when we uh, look at this, the, I think of the idea of to clench, to, to just you know brace yourself. Like you, you see a, a, a car coming at you and, and you kind of tense up to, to protect yourself if like that's going to help. But the, the, the point is, is that the idea of hypertension, to me, I've never experienced such a, a wonderful feeling of relaxation as I have since I bought this one bottle of stuff, I could do national ads for these guys. And it's it's a, something called a glycinate of magnesium. And ah, by golly, it just, it's just a nice, smooth, relaxing thing. And, uh, well, my blood pressure is doing a little better. And, of course, I'm still doing this other stuff. This is uh, that H plant tea. <laughs> uh, I, I finally thought of a way to think of it. There's uh, a famous two horses, one's Secretariat and the other one's Sea Biscuit. Sea biscuit. So I'm eating high biscuit. No, hibiscus. <laughs> it's the only way I can remember the name of the flower, okay? That's if you can make it weird, it's easier to remember. <laughs> high biscuit. <laughs> well anyhow, as as we're looking at the world, we're thinking there's gotta be a way to deal with all this insanity that's coming at us and not lose my mind and not freak out and not panic and not do some kind of suicide out and you know out the door. No. Uh-uh, don't you go there. There's a lot of people who are going to be hurting and a lot of people who need help. But you can be a source for others. I don't care what the damn good man has to say about it. You are not ever forbidden to help people. Especially in the name. The name of the Most High. Who came to visit his earth and you know what they did? They murdered his ass. That's what they thought of him. Well, the thing is, is that that same Jesus Christ is coming back. We have the victory. So there's a, there's a way to look at the world where you're you're all freaked out and tense and you know wore out and like ah, uh, it's scary, you know. Or you can look at it and you can say somehow through the lens of the Bible and the power of the Spirit and the love of God, Jesus Christ has conquered my heart. He's conquered my fears. He's he's changing us from the inside. So yes, the change is slow, but it's there. It's real. And so, I noticed the other day, I was right here in the same little park coming through. I've been doing this crazy thing where I try to run a little bit in the mornings to, you know, kind of, I heard it's good for you. <laughs> On a good day, I could run maybe 50 yards, stops, and I gotta go, <gasps> but anyhow, uh, I'm gonna keep at it and try to improve, you know, but I, I realized when I came out that uh, I've been basically like 20 pounds overweight for mm, probably at least 10 years, and... Uh, that cannot be a good thing in terms of hypertension. There's another guy, and I got I got to look this guy up and get his name because if if I'm going to stick with this idea, I, I like what he's saying. He's saying that no, 
we do know at least part of what causes hypertension, the onset. And it's called, it has to do with insulin resistance, having to do with way too much carbs and sugars, especially man-made sugars, in your system. And the, the body's overloaded. It gets confused. The insulin doesn't know what to do. So you end up with something called insulin resistance. This sets a lot of things askew. So, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at stuff like that. So anyway, one of his answers is to fast. And so when, when you fast uh, for 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 hours at a time, you can fast for days at a time if you like to. There's really nothing dangerous about it. It's, it, it's fine. But you enter into a different kind of mindset where you're not... Um, consumed by ideas as much or something like that so i guess what i'm saying is i'm, I'm going to recommend in in terms of this is that if you can get a hold of some good hypertension advice okay go get yourself some high biscuit tea i think it's called hibiscus i put i put red beet powder in there don't forget that do some isometric exercises to strengthen your hands don't ask me breathe through your nose don't ask me Exhale slowly to count of six. I don't know where this came from. Um, and there's this magnesium stuff. Oh my gosh, you got to get your magnesium. You got to get your electrolytes. You really do. And but the thing is, is that as long as your body, my body, is still burning fuel, always, always burning fuel that it just took on sometime in the last three days, four days. See, you store fat in two ways. This is my opinion, and I have nothing to prove it by. It that you store fat in two ways. There's a temporary, sort of a short term, then there's a long term. So say you sit down and have a, you know, a pineapple today or, or you know, a ice cream soda or whatever. Banana split. You ate excess calories of what you required. If you don't use those calories up in the next three to five days, what happens is they shift and they become another thing called stored fat. And uh, that's more difficult to get rid of, but you can't get rid of it until you cut through the calories you ate in the last three to five days so that's why people fast to kind of even up the score here a little bit you know let's face it you know they say oh you need 2300 calories a day just to be healthy it's like no you don't you need like maybe half 1400 tops and unless you're really active or you're you know working you know shoveling all day probably 1500 max that would be enough They'll never tell you that. <laughs> but, the, but the point is, and people believe they wake, they wake up and they have this religious experiment in their mind. It, you really have to eat breakfast. It's the most important part of the day. That's the result of advertising and propaganda, my man. <laughs> but anyway, the point being, if we think of the world as a, as a big patient who has hypertension, then they're clenching up, they're seizing up, they're unable to relax, they're unable to rest. Why? Well, they're disturbed by their own evil ways, for one thing. And then there's this issue of judgment from above coming in. We say Yahweh judges lands that are evil, and he will destroy those who refuse him. He has a uh, cutoff date expiration date you want to call it for evil for wickedness for lies fraud for all of the misery that we're seeing paraded before us and all the perversions one day all that comes to a screeching halt apart and to be able to walk in this new way in the presence of the lord i think that's going to be part of our answer going into this okay i'm not giving you a fix i'm not telling you where to find water i'm not telling you how to use a compass i'm telling you that if on the inside you're at rest and that you're at peace with your maker and that you can confess his name before others with uh, confidence. You're on the right track. Don't turn back. <laughs> grow in it. Grow in it. And, and flourish there. Because where he has you flourishing is as we witness to the Lamb. I love the words of John the Baptist. First thing he saw, the Messiah says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Yeah. <laughs> and that's for starters. But in other words... We, we direct our energy, our focus, our, our attention, our love, our worship to Jesus of Nazareth. And in the process of that, it aids us, it assists us, it smooths the way so that our lives in this crazy-ass, batshit, knucklehead world do not overwhelm us. But rather, we have victory with Christ through him. So there's a new way to be at peace, a new way to rest, a new way in him brought down here as a gift and nothing you can do to make you deserve it <laughs> ever but he's so good he gives it freely so 
that's what I'm saying is, is that as the, as the wheels fall off of reality and as the world turns into a, a crazy pants episode we need to be rooted down further and further in the truth of the story Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so well, it's not really a story it's a little song but never mind that and no I'm not going to sing it <laughs> God bless you and, and uh, thanks for listening thanks for watching thanks for dropping in but don't you give up no no you have the victory and Christ is through you yes even you revealing the depth of his mercy and his patience and his goodness and we'll know it to be able to say it to others have a good day. Run to win. Flourish. Flourish. <laughs>